Hi guys, good morning and welcome back to Covenant City Church Morning Devotional. Today we will again be learning from the story of Joseph and continuing from last week's devotional. Um, so we look at a point um, after the temptation, after Joseph said no to Potiphar's wife. Um, being rejected by Joseph, uh, Potiphar's wife telling uh, the opposite story um, to people and to her husband, um, saying that Joseph was the one who tried to sleep with her, and therefore Joseph was sent into prison. So let us read the passage and then I will pray and share some observations. Um, so Genesis chapter 39 verse 20 uh, to chapter 40 verse 3. And Joseph's master uh, took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph uh, and showed him steadfast love and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. Uh, the keeper of the prison paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge because the Lord was with him and whatever he did, the Lord made it succeed. Sometime after this, the cupbearer of the king of Egypt and his baker committed an offense against their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. And he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison where Joseph was confined. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in our limitations, um, not understanding the things that are happening in our lives. Um, but help us, Father, to rest in, in your perfect knowledge and wisdom, trusting that all things work together uh, for those who believe in you. And, and help us, Father, to, to taste and see that you are good throughout any season um, and have confidence that whatever you ordain is right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, uh, this passage is after Joseph refused the temptation and because he was doing the right thing, uh, he was sent into prison. So it is precisely uh, because of his unwillingness to sin that leads to his arrest and being sent to prison. Well, well, we might say, this doesn't feel right. Uh, where is God in all this? Uh, where is God when Joseph obeyed God? Um, but verse 21 gives answer to our wondering. It says, the Lord was with him and showed him steadfast love and favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. The fact that the Lord was with him um, actually has been repeated many times in the story of Joseph. It affirms that the Lord was with Joseph in all those events, in all those tra tragedies, in all places, um, including in times when the situations just don't make any sense, including in times where it seems like Joseph was not protected by God and caught in a setback. Mm, but let us see the bigger picture. What difference does this chapter or this incident make um, to the story of Joseph, or to the book of Genesis, or to the history of redemption. If we take chapter 39 out, or this incident out, what significance would we miss? This chapter, chapter 39, is actually a prelude or a setup uh, to chapter 40. Uh, let us read again chapter 40 verses 1 to 3. Sometime after this, after he was being in, uh, he was sent to prison, the cupbearer of the king of Egypt and his baker committed an offense against their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison where Joseph was confined. Um, so chapter 39 explains why Joseph is in prison so that he is available to the king's cupbearer and the king's baker when those two are sent to prison by Pharaoh. And after some time in prison, the cupbearer and the baker um, um, had dreams. Uh, Joseph then interpreted their dreams and, and the dreams came true. And then the cupbearer returned to Pharaoh while Joseph stayed in prison. And two years after that, still in prison, uh, Pharaoh had a dream and it's someone to interpret it. Um, then the cupbearer remembered Joseph 
and Joseph was called to interpret Pharaoh's dreams. Pharaoh was pleased with Joseph and he made Joseph later on the overseer of his house and over the, all the lands in Egypt. Joseph was then in charge uh, for the project of uh, severe famine relief in which it saves a lot of people, including his own family, um, God's people, in which lineage Jesus came to this world to die on the cross and to save us. So you see all this, like you see that chapter 39 is not a random suffering or a setback because if Joseph had not been sent to prison, he wouldn't be called by Pharaoh. He also wouldn't have been placed in a position to spare his family and not just a family, but a family in whom God promised to Abraham as his people. So what can we learn from this story? Um, first, we may not understand things or the meaning of hardships in our lives right now. Many people in the Old Testament didn't see the meaning or the impact of their lives. Or let's talk about Indonesia. Perhaps the first missionary who came and brought the gospel to Indonesia might not know or might never imagine that there will be churches throughout Indonesia like today. But, but don't get me wrong, um, the goal is not to know the exact meaning or impact of our lives on earth because we may or we may never see it in this life actually. But my second point, although we might not see or understand the meaning, it does not mean that it has no meaning. Uh, on the contrary, there is no random thing in history. Just like the story of Joseph, history is not just a compilation of events of um, of events of one thing after another without meaning. Uh, there is always meaning in him. The peculiar providence of God over his plan of redemption is interwoven beautifully in history of mankind from the beginning of time to the end. And there is no day or no event that is beyond his plan. So too are our lives. Um, the things that happened in the past, the things that are happening right now, including this COVID season, or things that don't make sense or seem like setbacks to us. Everything has meaning in Him, though we do not understand or we might never understand it, um, those things on earth. But we can trust Him who said that all things work together for good for those who believe in Him. When God does something, He sees it all. And we learn today how God in His perfect knowledge and wisdom doing thousands and thousands of things down the road that are so beautifully interwoven in history for good purposes for those who believe in him. And my last point, my third point is, what we can learn from the story of Joseph is um, our obedience is not something in vain and is not without purpose. Um, our obedience and our walk with him does many things. Um, and one of those things is that it creates a deep intimacy with him. Um, to know, to experience, to witness that the Lord is with us throughout any seasons is a precious and great reward for us as it creates a deep intimacy with Him. Just like Joseph who witnessed that the Lord was with him through it out, enables him later on to say to his brothers who sold him to slavery in Egypt, um, he said, it was not you who sent me here, but God. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Um, like the devotional that I shared two weeks ago. So this was a profound liberation, strength, and hope, which come from a deep intimacy with God, which resulted from Joseph witnessing God's presence throughout different seasons in his life, through painful hardships, um, Joseph sees and experiences how the Lord is alive, how the Lord is faithful, how the Lord is his steady anchor, how the Lord is the one who sustains him and is the one who restores his broken soul. He has tasted and seen that the Lord is good and that is precious. When I look back at a painful exp uh, experience of mine um, in the past, I said to myself, I definitely don't want to go through that again, uh, no. But I wouldn't treat that for anything because through that very experience, I I got to see a lot more of God, of Him, and who I am in His eyes that are so liberating and comforting and give me hope. 
that it becomes so real even to me what it means what it means by peace that surpasses all understanding joy that is unspeakable that won't go away and, and even um, uh, makes the scripture or the hymn that we sing on Sunday become more and more real and alive and that kind of deep intimacy with God is, is a precious and a great reward of our walk with God, of our obedience, of our sufferings as well. Uh, made through everything that we are going through right now, though we don't understand the meaning of a thing or doesn't make sense to us, um, lead us to a deeper intimacy with Him, which comforts and strengthens us um, till we come to a place where there is no pain or suffering or tears. There is no random things in history, and in his perfect wisdom and knowledge, all things work together for those who believe in him.